We're here with Paddy Hillhan. Uh, Paddy, we're meant to have you in yesterday, but uh, we're, we're actually we're going to give away, we're going to break the fourth wall here and say we're pre-recording this. Uh, you had a few issues getting into us. Still, ha still have problems getting collected in Jobstown and taxis. Show me the 50 euro this guy is saying to me this morning. It's talking about 8 o'clock. Um, I haven't got 50 euro on me, to be honest, to show him. You're supposed to have on the account or something, ways. Yeah, there's a bit of, I don't know, we'll, we'll, we'll work it out, but... Uh, we don't you, know, but... You think I have in general it's kind of, it's sort of endemic of a bit of an attitude? Um, no, I'm used to it. Unfortunately, that still exists in society. And uh, people, ah, oh, no, everyone's... No, people still keep that. Just a little bit more secret now, you know what I mean? Um, I noticed, like, this morning that guy was, like... I was trying to explain to him, listen, we're just going in here. It's going to be an interview. This is what we're doing. He's like, where are you going? Like, I don't really know. The address should be there. And he's like, no, show me the money. You know what I mean? He must have been watching the... <laughs> Jerry, what was it, Jerry Maguire last Jerry night? Show me the money, you know what saying? So I was like, turn me back. And then the taxi driver that brought me in there, um, Ali, uh, where was he from? It was, was it Albania? Really nice guy. Sound. Had one of the best conversations of my life. Well, yeah, I probably learned more there on the way in I did than, than any other day. I think taxi journeys on the way in, I think, are the best way to do it because you get something to talk about. <laughs> That's right. That's a bit of balance. You got a bit of column A, a bit of column B. A bit of balance. That can't be it, yeah. Uh, one reason we have you in here is because you've launched this new podcast, No Shame, and uh, you're talking there about kind of like bit of divide in society. That's just kind of a topic that you hit, seem to hit on a lot in these interviews. It's not, it's not, it's not just straight kind of sports. No, it, it's, it's, it's actually probably away from sports, to be honest. Um, I know we touch on, like, on, on fights and, and I get guys in the air fighters, but to me, I'm, I'm interested in, um, in what's going on in people's heads and, and the idea of what's going on in society. And, and I'm just, it's, it's, it's just in, I'm interested in it. I'm interested in what other people think. And, and I, think, I think we all think the same thing a lot of the time. A lot of the time, people are reacting the same, getting up early in the morning, um, going to not wanting to go to bed uh, too late at night, and all of just simple stuff. I think we're all very, very close, you know, but there's a lot of stuff that gets mixed in the way to make it a lot harder for us and for other people to profit from, and that's usually what happens. It's like if you confuse the masses of everyone, it's usually a few people can kind of profit from it, and uh, I feel that I, I just want people to be happy these days. It, it's, it's, it's hard to find true happiness. People relate happiness to, to clothes and money and, and success and stuff like that and all where, where it's not. True happiness is like, sounds cliche, but you know, it's, it's things that you can't buy. It's things that like, it's, it's like the feeling after training that we were just talking there. It's like, um, it's like, like having a new kid if you must. Or, or, really, really special things, you know? And little things like materials and stuff like that, if they make you happy, Probably not that bright. <laughs> yeah. Uh, your taxi drama is probably escaping from uh, from another situation going on. Uh, I believe you're expecting. Yes, tomorrow. Tomorrow is the due date. So, um, my dear friend Chelsea having a baby tomorrow. Well, uh, tomorrow, I don't think it works like that, does it? It's sure not going to be like, hold on. I, 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 I booked this one for today. <laughs> yeah, no, so I'd say over the next, the next week, I'm going to be a fighter again. Yeah, so this is going to be, it's going to be crazy. It really is. Fun. I'm looking forward to it. I mean, as I said, touching on that there this is this is one of the realest things I think you can do as, as, as a man and, and as, a, as a woman and as a person you know is uh, give life and kind of say on the scale between sort of like the excitement and that and the kind of anxiety of, ta of sort of of that coming into your life where are you, where are you at how are you feeling um, I think if you fought a lad in a cage everything else is a little, especially a little baby is a, is a little bit less scary um, definitely like handling and stuff, I think at the start. Yeah, I don't know. I, I remember when my, when my son turned, which is like eleven years of age, that I was, it was like like someone threw me a rugby ball. I just knew what to do, you know. I just so I'm, I am hoping that this is the way it's gonna be on this one. And uh, what's it like raising an eleven year old today? Yeah. Um, I think well, Tiernan's kind of the kind of the kid that that's uh, stuck that rocket up my butt if you must, you know what I mean? And I'm still in school when I was having Tiernan. Um, I didn't know where I was going in life. I didn't know what was going on. Um, I was kind of, I was, I was, I was already training at the time. I was training jiu jitsu, um, but I had no aspirations to be like, to, to be the best fighter in the world. If you must, that's not how I set out. Um, I found jiu jitsu, and then, and then what I wanted to do is I wanted to expand, and I wanted to, I wanted to use what I was finding in jiu jitsu. Jiu jitsu was like, was fixing me. That's what I found. Every time I went, and put a little piece of me together and made me a little bit happier, and and and, and made me kind of 
uh, connect to, to a group of people that, that, that were doing something, you know, so we weren't sitting around and it wasn't that like kind of like that negative energy, it was a real positive energy. So when, when that happened, when Tierney came, that gave me a low, a big wave of energy. I think anyone that knows that's, <clears throat> that's had a kid, and, and especially if you've had a young, it can give you a huge like, burst of energy, you know. Now, if that, I wouldn't, I don't recommend going around and having lots of kids at, at a young age, but um, it definitely did what uh, what it did to me, and, and the rest is history. I, I I made stuff happen because because he came, and now the next one I'm on I'm on my next journey now. So this is career number two, if you must, you know. So I'm gonna make this one work as well, and hopefully I'm gonna use the energy from this from from this this kid. Is there anything else on the horizon? Uh, run the gym, produce and present the podcast uh, with your guys out there. Oh, it's mental. Loads of, so let you finish. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Is that is that kind of what this career number two is? Is that or is there are there more pieces coming? Yeah. Uh, no. Be? Career number two was 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 always going to be coaching. Was always going to be like a um, way back in the day. I said I was going to come back and I was going to open a gym with community and I was going to um, I was going to use it to try to do the same things that I was doing for me. So. Um, um, look, money is good, but there's no doubt. There's no doubt when you're going somewhere and you get money and you get paid, that's good, but it doesn't motivate me as much as uh, maybe it should, you know? So t- the idea of me of having my own my own gym, having my own little, um, little community of people and being able to network with, with other gyms and, and guys that I've came up with and being able to create that link and keep that link. And, and, and people want to hear the stories now, you know? Unfortunately, we're, we're the old guys now, you know? <laughs> we're the, we're the, the older generation and... Um, people want to hear how did that happen and, and, and why it happened and what was so special about that group that, that made that little team the, the, the solid knit that what it was and, and that's literally what it was. it was it was a simple simple process then you know it, was, it, was, it wasn't so big it was simple and I think, I think simples and basics is, is the way forward uh, do you feel that there are kind of aspects of that kind of original sort of uh, ethos that drove on that kind of first ma- that first wave of Irish UFC fighters that's in your own gym or specific things you'd say or well what I did is I created the gym that I have now is my plan was and um, this this is this will be my second gym on this mission yeah so this is the one that I've created off off my plan and and, 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 and it's mine it's all mine so which is I, 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 no sometimes that's hard it's like there's a toilet bloke upstairs Paddy remember you said this was all yours <laughs> go up and fix it <laughs> so it's, it can be like that sometimes but the thing about um, about my gym is I feel that like I've made the when we all started off I felt the the really really strong SBG team was in the Longmoy Road gym was in the, the the gym that was kind of a little bit a little bit darker a little bit a little bit wetter I feel was still a little bit colder and now I've kind of tried to make that re re reestablish that kind of that that environment the environment now. It's nice and warm. <laughs> Sometimes I let a cold just to, to bring back the old days. No, but it, it, there's two floors. It's uh, like the same way the, the gym that we came up in was. Now, it has a little bit of a better paint job than that gym, but I really feel that, like, this is what people say to me when they come in all the time. The energy in here, it's brilliant. And that's what I set out to do. When I was, when I was setting that gym up, it's like, it's all about the energy. It's about the feel. If you walk in that door and it doesn't feel like, this feels really nice. You're probably not doing it right, you know. It's a, it's it's the set. Well, I got that feeling when I came into when, in, into the Raccoon Gym and Long Mile Gym when I started with the, with the team, and and I've I've recreated that. So what I'm trying to do is recreate what we did, and I feel a lot of it was in was in the energy of the team and the camaraderie between us. I think that had a huge part because that's still there today like if, if I meet like 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 Peter Creeley or Chris Field or Connor or the guys it's like it's like yeah you know like there's an energy there it's like you just want to talk you just want to have like a, a conversation that it's not the same to have that conversation with other people you know so it's a uh, what I'm trying to create is a whole new wave of that and, and to be able to create opportunities in Irish MMA for scholarships for for people that really want to work and really want to go down the road of MMA the path is there now and with the with the with the the IMMA and the IMAF and stuff like that, there's there's a better there's a better platform for people to walk towards. Yeah, it just the funding and the idea of people affording that that's the only problem in the way now. I just kind of in terms of the gym and people coming in. Like a few years ago, we had that kind of initial kind of sugar rush of all these guys blowing up in the UFC, kind of Connor going on his run. Uh, that's kind of that we're kind of we've gotten further into that process now. And like, is there a different kind of feel on the scenes, or a different kind of feel on sort of who's coming into the gym, 
what the kind of energy around it is. Yeah, definitely. When when Connor first blew up, it was there was loads of madmen. <laughs> you know, if you must, you know, you'd guys coming into the gym and it's like, like hair back and the glasses on, and they'd be like, "Hi, I'm I'm the future world champion and all. I'm, I'm, I'm it's a pleasure to meet you." And he'd be like, "I like give everybody a chance. I'm not, you know what I mean? Everybody gets a chance." You, you can ask guys, that, like, I've had coaches that work for me that I've, I, I've had to call to the side and say, listen, I know, I know with one guy or, or another guy and I'd say to them, listen, this is your opportunity to get a little bit better at being a coach. So say if some guy is awkward, like I, I've had a guy in my gym that triangle chokes don't work, like rear naked chokes don't work, like leg kicks don't work, and you'd be like, no, they do, and you'd be like, right, triangle choke me out cold and I'll promise you I'm okay. And I, like, it's just hard because you're like... No one wants to hurt anybody, and he'd be like, leg kick me as hard as you can. I might have took him up on that one. <laughs> but it, it changes people's perspective. But coaches would be like, this guy over there, I, I, I can't deal with him. And I'd say, listen, let, let me show you. This is a learning curve. Have patience with him. And, and all of a sudden, we had, this, we had this one guy, I won't mention, but the idea is that all of a sudden he started coming out of his shell, and he started becoming, I won't say normal, but because normal's not a good thing either. <laughs> he, he started becoming like, Hold on, you understand what you mean? He started believing, he started listening to the coaches, he started improving, he, he started losing weight. And, and was, coaches were coming to me, even coaches that, that, that were coaching other places going, what did you do with that kid? What did you do with him? Like, that's, this is different. And I said, we just gave him patience. We gave him the time for, like, to be a little bit weird if you must, you know? And, and, and he kind of got over it and then realised, hold on, these people are not laughing at me, they're not slagging me. These, these are like these are with me. They're trying to help me now. There is some people on the other side of that where you do help them. You help them over and over and over again. You, you do everything for them. You and they don't really appreciate it. And they they they're kind of like yeah, like, like get me a free. And you're like, mate, I haven't seen you in four weeks. <laughs> do you know what I mean? And then the best one, the model student, the one I love to do, the is the person that comes in and doesn't really say too much but just trains and walks and asks the right questions and does, says the right things and where did, why, why was that grip like this and why was it not like this and uh, did you see the fight the weekend? How did he do this? And To me, I, I love that student. I love them all, but I love that one. Yeah, and kind of down the line, say, we're coaching in terms of between sort of that kind of on the mats with sort of anyone who's walking into the gym, taking those groups and also kind of <coughs> taking elite amateur, taking guys on pro journeys. Where do you kind of see yourself fitting in there? Where, where's your interest? I fit everywhere. So to me, I have to have my hands on it all because um, I feel like I have, I feel like I have from the brain. And, I, and I, I, wouldn't, I shouldn't be trying to be an artist if I didn't. To me, coaching is an art as well. You know, you have to have, you take responsibility of somebody and somebody's putting a lot of trust in you to be able to, because they're getting in somewhere to fight somebody after a while. But then I have an array of people to me, we have people that come in, and these are these are probably the the biggest population of the gym. Everyone thinks it's going to be fighters. I have people that I have accountants that train, I have, I have, I have teachers, I have guys that are <coughs> trying to get um, looking for a job, or just doing this in between to kind of you, know, you you have all sorts of people, and they're the people that I'm really interested in. The people that are kind of just trying to figure something else out. The gym doesn't work for them. They're running on a treadmill with a pair of headphones in, not talking to anybody. It just doesn't work for them. It doesn't work for me. I used to cut weight in the gym and stuff like that when it was cold out. And I just never felt like this kind of connection, you know? But if someone comes in and then they do a jiu-jitsu class, they go upstairs and they're like this coming in, right? They're nervous and they're like, all right. And I, and I always meet them at the reception. I teach, as I said, I teach all the way down to, like, to the kids, all the way up to guys fighting at like, high level, you know? So they, when it comes down to, say, people come to the gym they come in nervous and then they come back down from say a beginner's jiu-jitsu class or something and they're like it's like it's like they're either taking a drug or something they're they're they're, they're smiling they're 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 looking at me in a, in a funny way and it's literally like a drug it takes a little while to jump in it's it's close contact but it's it's very social you know it's it's act, active and it's social so because you have to say to somebody listen can you move your leg there can you well what are you doing i don't know what i'm doing here and it's can be a bit fun, you know what I mean? Yeah, and then kind of on the more sort of uh, elite end of things, even during your career, we would see you kind of popping up, cornering people. Uh, How did you find that whole experience of cornering someone on a big at a big fight? And kind of are there, are there, do you have a certain approach to that, or certain things you're trying to communicate? Um, when I started, uh, I, I had a mission, you know what I mean? I, 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 
I had qualified in my coaching courses. I had, I had, I went to Canada and qualified in in, in lots of in many different coaching things in in, in in like group development, in in, in child development, in, in in agility courses. I I, I have. FAI badges of rugby badges of, of fun and game but all sorts of different um, and I qualified as as a fitness instructor but then as I said I, quali- I further on that qualification in Canada I remember standing on um, I'd won a gold medal that day in Canada I was training Jiu Jitsu but I was, I was still qualifying I remember winning a gold medal and I said to myself I'm going to go home and give this everything I'm, I'm about I think I was 20 21 at the time and I was like I'm just going to give it 10 years I'll give it everything I have I'm 30 now and I'm retired. I planned on just flogging the horse until it was dead until this age. And if not, I'd just go and get a job or something. <laughs> so I'm kind of in a situation where I've always been, I've always been chasing that, that, that path, you know. C- coaching for me and, and opening the gym was, was the thing that was down the road. Um, I, I told my own coach that way back at the start of the, 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 the journey. I never held that back. I, I, when I was training, or when I was giving interviews, that's what I was saying. I'm going to come back to Thailand and I'm going to open a gym. And... I'm, I'm just, I'm privileged to be able to, I've walked my ass off and, and got there, you know. Now, it was not easy. Nobody, nobody handed me nothing, for sure. And, and, and here we are, you know. Yeah. And in terms of kind of the second and third wave of kind of Irish fighters coming through, we've, we've seen like loads of guys signed up to Bellator, kind of waiting for a Bellator show. We've seen kind of big, massive metal holes at the amateur world championships there. Uh, do you think there is kind of that? that big next wave coming through obviously there's not that many like not many guys in the UFC roster at the moment um, 100% I, I feel like I feel like a lot of people on the Bellator contracts uh, it's like 50-50 I think a lot of them deserved it and a lot of them maybe needed more fights for it you know what I mean now if Bellator's going to come and it's very hard to say no to, 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 to signing a big contract like that but to me Bellator doesn't have that many that shows so if we sign 20 of our fighters or whoever I don't know 22 or something signed, was it Signed to Bellator, well then, like they need to stay active. Now, if they can fight outside their contracts and stuff like that, good enough. Well, then, if you're fighting for Bellator, and you, I hope you're getting Bellator money. That's 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 the main thing. Because when you're fighting professional, don't you, you, you can't be worrying about what show you're fighting on or what's going on. I know it sounds terrible, but you have to think about the money then, because nobody thinks about you when you're gone. Let me tell you that you're on your own when you're outside that cage. Dana White doesn't ring you and it's like, Paddy, are you okay, can you pay your bills this month and all? Like, or nobody does. you got to pay your own bills, and that's it. And let me tell you, the other people are trying to pay their bills too. So if you're fine, you make sure you get, and professional, make sure you get as much money as you can. Because someday it stops, and the money stops, unless you've set it up. Unless you've set yourself up in a coaching career, or you've got, some, you've, you've got your coaching badges, or you've got some experience. Because what really happens mostly is, unfortunately, it's that people retire and they kind of, some people never get the limelight, they never get the idea to, to, exp- to, to, to show what, they, what they're capable of or show their character and, and be able to use that after their career. And then when it comes out of their career, they fall into coaching by mistake, you know? And, and you can't do that with any job. You know, like, why, you, I wouldn't fall, I don't want, I wouldn't want anybody to fall into a job that they didn't want to do. I think if, if you're doing this and, and you're happy doing this, you make the world a little tiny bit better. Do you know what I mean? But if you're working, if you're working like in Central down the road or something like that, and you don't like it, you're just forced to be there. I don't think. I think you give a little bit of extra negativity to the world. You know. So after it, when you're finished, make sure you're doing something that you really want to do. Don't be just well. Well, I thought so. Now I'm going to teach him how to fight, and, and then he, because there's a lot more to it. It's, it's not. Um, it's not just like. Here's a jab. Here's a cross. It's like it's like being a counselor, man. You know what I mean? You've got to counsel people because when when it comes down to it, the guys that people look in on and see big, tough, strong people, all of a sudden, when you you look as a coach or uh, as being in the background, as you were saying there, like you see a lot of these people at their their rawest, which to me is so. I said it's, it's brilliant. I love it. I don't care. I don't really mind whether people win or lose, but the idea of like stripping it all back and, and going to that raw place is, is, is incredible to see and you see people that, that, that crumble under it and then you see some people that, that, that rise to the occasion so in all of that background as I said I've done it in many different places many different times different levels but to me it's always been just what's going on at that moment um, on the weekend we, I have two fighters in Liverpool on Cage Warriors Academy and it, Great, one of the kids is 
ridiculous, man. And the, the talent coming up is, is crazy. I had um, I had seven guys competing in the Midlands Open, which is run by Philip Mulpier in uh, SPG Port Arlington. Really good uh, competition to be able to get. It's a novice competition to get to get kids moving, and that that that's the problem with Irish MMA now. It needs to be moving. It needs more shows. It needs more activity, and it needs to be, the wheels need to be pumped a little bit harder. You know, everyone needs to get 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 together a little bit more and organise the idea of, of of pushing the community together. Yeah, because you'd imagine kind of <coughs> if people can get their get their heads in order, like there, there must be kind of money to be made if people can kind of get this organised and get like it's surprising that there's less sh- that there's fewer shows on. Is that kind of to do with kind of the regulatory back, backdrop and? Yes, but, that, but that's all necessary as well, you know what I mean? Really, it's necessary to make, to make the sport a sport, you know what I mean? That, it needs to be, that needs to be, that has to have that, 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 that structure. Um, so, if, if everybody can throw a show on, there's no kind of, there's no regulation, there's no regulatory, uh, regulation, ah, you know what regulation. I mean? Regulation. Yeah. <clears throat> if there's no regulation, then the idea is that there's no structure for it to go, to walk off, there's no framework for everyone to have to follow and, and, the fires, so they has to be dealt in a, in a careful way, you know. So I don't think I wouldn't I wouldn't put M- the label MMA as, as as crazy dangerous, to be honest. You know what I mean? You know, maybe like 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 horse riding or, or MotoGP or Formula One or, or even skiing and stuff like that. To me, like I would, I would be shitting myself to need a one of them. Yeah. Now, but I wouldn't turn around and turn and tell. Tell a, a ski, an expert ski skier, listen, you should be doing this or you shouldn't be doing that. It's like, mate, I'm not going to be lobbing myself down a, down, a, down a ramp to jump off some skiers soon, so I'm not going to tell you to do it. But if you want to do it, fair enough. So, But MMA, show-wise, we just need more of that kind of spread out. They, let's, let's face it, like, it has to, it's accepted as a sport. It's, it's accepted as... it's. There's an amateur level to it. There's a professional level to it. People don't distinguish that, which is not fair. It's not fair. Like um, we, we, there was a really good um, Kelly Harrington, absolutely amazing boxer, great person for our community as well. Sets up so many things. Unbelievable athlete and person. Got gold. Huge congratulations to her for the for the in the in the world championships. But the week before, or two weeks before that, we also had. Three guys getting uh, gold medals. It was three, uh, three guys getting gold medals, which had 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 went and failed and got bronze, and then failed and got silver. And then we put them next to this team, this Russia team, the team that is like these guys are paid and funded, and they have their guys hadn't even got tracksuits when they went over there for the MMA thing. So you know what I'm saying? I really think that look at our football team. <laughs> what are we gonna do? That 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 the horse is dead. If we're looking at it, there's in the next seven years there's probably nobody coming up. We don't have people coming through, we don't have it like it used to be. So like let's look at what we're good at. We're good at combat sports. We have Kelly out there that's at the winning a gold medal for boxing. In MMA there's a really good structure there. So let's put it let's put this on the map, the MMA on the map and do what we're good at. We're not good at football. We're good at rugby, but we're not good at football, you know? So but think about the amount of money that goes into the academies for football and for like, like nothing goes into MMA. So I think that we should put it into, we're standing next to countries that are funded, some of the biggest like athletes in the world, you know what I mean? Guys that like have been on the Olympics and then training and, and we're putting it up to them guys, putting it next to them guys. So that's where I think a lot of the funding should be and if everybody gets on board, MMA could be a huge flag for, for Ireland if you must, you know? We could be good again. <laughs> Back to Jack Charlton times. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Obviously, the foot in the door there is kind of getting, <coughs> getting recognised and starting kind of regulation. Uh, going forward yourself, you've done a bit of TV work, and obviously you've got a, a knack for breaking down fights. Um, are you interested in kind of going down that analyst route, or? Um, I don't mind. I do it every now and again. To be honest, I'm um, as I said, I wouldn't be into I wouldn't be into turning up like I wouldn't be into turning up every single UFC show probably and, and the only analysis. You know what I mean? No, I reckon the money is good. But the, the, the traveling and being away from Ireland and all of that kind of stuff it would would get me. Now I'm kind of on like a on a bazooka roll, you know, like, like that looks good. I'll do that, so, you know. And, and I enjoy doing it. Like I, I enjoy doing the bar, mate. I really like breaking down the fights. Not only that, I was breaking down some of my mates' fights. Like how cool is that? Like you know, what? like Keith Crosby's had to be in an absolute like war in there, you know. What I mean? And then I get to go in and interview him, and it's like like you want to ask your mate after a fight like that, anyway. 
I was that like, did you see that? That, that was good, it's, he slipped that and all. So let alone we get to go, well, okay, what do you think of that? <laughs> so that, that was really, really cool. I'd love to do some more of that. Um, and it was handy, it wasn't like every month, you know? So every two or three months and it was kind of, it was sweet. Um, the idea of I've done some of the stuff of breaking down uh, the Khabib fight with, uh, with Dan Hardy, that was really cool as well. You know, these are guys that like, I, I'm a fan of, you know? So I'm standing there breaking down fights with him and he's nodding at me saying, that's a really good point. And you're like, it is, isn't it? <laughs> you know? Maybe I am good at this. You know? that, but that's how it kind of goes. And, then, and the podcast, the podcast, uh, the No Shame podcast, if you haven't listened to it, check it out, subscribe. It's not about MMA. It's, it's more about the idea of getting information that's quality because that's the hardest part these days. Wherever you get your information from, no matter what it is about going on in the world, check out the source of that information because that's important, you know? And I think with the No Shame podcast, what you see is what you get, you know? I'll, I'll turn up and tell you how it is and, and if, if I don't know how it is, I'll get someone on that knows how it is. And, and then, this is a good podcast too as well. Spend <laughs> <laughs> your time for all that. Uh, before we do, you're talking there about breaking down Connor's uh, Connor Khabib before the fight. Um, how did you feel about how that played out? And um, Khabib's an animal. Let's be let's, let's be straight. You know what I mean? But um, I, I, Connor's Connor's like he's iconic. You know what I mean? Like to go from where he went to to where he is now is is unreal. You know what I mean? And one of the biggest questions I get is like, "What's it like to be Connor's me?" And you're like, kind of the same way it is for you to be mates with your me. Only more, he happens to be a superstar, you know what I mean? And to me, it's, it's just been the same. To be honest, I meet him, it's like, all right, that's the story. Um, I feel, I feel obviously, I'd say Connor's disgusted with the, the, the fight. He's, he's competitive. He, there's no day, the way he went in there to compete, he went in there to win, you know what I mean? And it, as I said, but it, it, what, it happened the way it was going to happen. And if, if, if Connor had a loss, that's the way it was going to be. Khabib was going to take him down. And, 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 and Khabib did some standing and stuff like that. It was, it was a great fight. It was a, it was a good fight. That's, that's it, you know what I mean? And that, that's how fighting goes. Yeah, and kind of watching that fight and kind of everyone's obviously deconstructing afterwards. Uh, if there was a rematch, can, do you see what ways that can go different? Definitely, yeah. I feel like I feel in the first takedown, Connor might have been able to guillotine him there. You can see his head's coming up. He might have been able to snap the guillotine where I think he was just being calm still. So he shot in and he kind of hold on. Like, instead of like, being stiff at the start, just kind of playing with it, you know what I mean? And then more of like um, maybe trying to choke him on the cage. So when Khabib's there, kind of like trying to guillotine him. And sometimes you get the torn out of that and you get the reaction. We know that. A lot of my guys, that's what we teach the idea of if someone's taking them down and they're kind of stuck on the hips, is like when you start choking, so if someone's wrapping up your hips, they usually have their bow hands down. You can kind of like, especially if they have a beard, you can kind of like peel out the hairs and get the neck and then start attacking the neck and, and you usually get good space. But like, Khabib is, is doing this for a long, long, long time and there's no doubt he's, he's felt them pressures as well. But you can't go in there and. and, and, and do a magic spell. It's 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 techniques. It's it, it, it's basics with that kind of stuff. And um, I, th- I think Conor was doing well. I think he was doing well. You know, and, and even when like that that fight could have torn easy. It's th- them little waves and the, like kind of waves of smoke that go through a fight. As a fighter, you can see, oh, here's the turn of the tide here. You know, like so up to that point, I think it was the third round. It was the third round? I'm, I'm the worst I remember when I'm breaking down this stuff. This where that's the only stuff I write down. <laughs> what yeah, rounds were? Yeah. Yeah. Secretary when he got dropped. Yeah, yeah, but 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 even after that, the Connor was putting a wave on him. You know what I mean? In and I think that. Oh yeah, third round he kind of comes back and starts. Starts, he starts landing shots. He starts keep finding the distance. He starts and it's like, oh, and just because and then he lands that shot. You know, but just before that, Connor was starting to get that momentum. If that round had to finish maybe without the overhand right, Khabib probably would have said, oh, maybe I'm sl- maybe, and Connor might have got the rise out because that's the thing about MMA. Even I te- if I'm teaching something, I say this as well. If you come out into the middle and someone takes you down and you're like, oh no, they're going to get this big up out of it and you're going to get this big down out of it. So you need to reset and be numb at that moment, you know? So if you come out, you make sure that you're landing the first jab and you're being assertive and you're being the first takedown. And then it's like, right, I got the takedown. And you need these little kind of carrots in a fight as well to, to chip you along, you know? So maybe in the first takedown for Khabib being the most important. He's like, if I can get this one, I can't take him down. I can't I? Can I? Can't I? Because that's what happens in your mind, especially when you're lying at bed. <laughs> you're lying in bed for eight weeks. Can I? Can't I? You know, so I, I reckon if the first one had failed and he had got clipped for a few shots, 
we've been a whole different fight. Great stuff, Paddy. Uh, you can find the No Shame podcast wherever you find your OTBAM podcast and the rest of the Off the Ball podcasts. Paddy's also out at SPG in Dublin 24. Thanks, Paddy. No bother.